challenge your day with discipline, don't challenge your day with regret, right? They, they both equal the same amount of energy. The outcomes are distinctive and exponentially different. If you challenge yourself with discipline every day, coherence, remembering what you want and doing what it takes to get there, instead of regret, not doing what you want and forgetting how to get there, I promise you it's the same amount of energy, but the exponential differentiation between the two are amazing. And so everyone, you'd rather suffer from discipline than suffer from regret. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to take care of anyone else. And uh, I started to realize as I studied my health that when you're healthy, you get the most valuable asset in life, which is wishes. You have to ask the source for what you want. You got to make wishes. And when you're healthy, you get as many wishes a day, as many as you want. Our guest today is one of the top esports entrepreneurs and investors in the game. He's a three time international best selling author and a top 100 business coach. He's the executive producer of the television series Two Minute Drill and also the executive producer of Entrepreneur's number one digital business show, Elevator Pitch. He has been featured in many books, movies, and TV shows such as World's Greatest Motivators, Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, and Beyond the Secret. He's also been recognized by Variety Magazine as their Sports Humanitarian of the Year and awarded the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. Welcome to the show, co-founder of Sports One Marketing, host of the Playbook Podcast, author, speaker, and philanthropist, David Meltzer. Hey, Mike, thank you so, so much for having me. Just a, another opportunity to help people, to empower people. My mission in life is to empower others to be happy. And shows like this really allow me to have a bigger reach and a bigger impact. And I just want to thank you for building such a great community that I can impact. Yeah, brother, thank you so much. We have very similar missions. The mission of Mike'd Up is to inspire people to be brave and bold in pursuit of their dreams. That heart tug comes and gets them, and then what do they do with it? And uh, having someone like yourself on the show is a great way to inspire them because you've done it through your story, and we're going to unpack that a little bit at a time here. I know I have you for about 25 more minutes, so I want to be mindful to keep this thing moving, but also make sure we cover some of those key elements so people can tune in. They can say, hey, David did this. I can do this too, right? And that's what I want people to be internalizing as they hear your interview today. Um, people can tune in to D Meltzer, and it's the letter D and then Meltzer's M-E-L-T-Z-E-R. Don't worry about writing that down if you're driving. It's in the show notes. Everything's clickable as well as David's Facebook and Instagram and everywhere he's at on social media. That's where I first connected with him. And a quick shout out before we run into some of these questions here is Amberly Lago. I got to give a shout out to her because that's where I first heard you on her show and Ed Milet also. And you guys did that sit down interview um, with the ocean behind you. That Those are two impactful interviews. And I just want to give a proper shout out to them. And also, David, your team, Nick and Todd, they set this interview up today. Um, I just want you to know that they made me feel like family in setting that show up and uh, making sure that we're here together today. And um, without them, like they, they just did such a great job. And I think that that really talks about you as a great coach, mentor, leader of your team. And I just wanted to give you some love on that. I appreciate it. And I'm so blessed to have friends like Amberly and Ed and others who we share the mission like you have to allow people to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of their potential. And then especially my own team who are truly, uh, to me, the proof, the case study of living with values and daily practices of coherence, of utilizing what I teach in order to effectuate success by helping other people. And every time I hear my friends or my team have helped to empower other people or to facilitate things in the appropriate manner, it makes my heart sing. So thank you for recognizing and acknowledging them. Yeah, I don't know how many people would stop to, to say that. It's just a matter of like, sometimes we're always in go mode. We don't stop to realize it. And I think when you look for a good leader, don't look at the leader always. Look at the people around and underneath the leader. Look at the players. Look at the people on the team and see how they actually interact with one another. That says a lot about the leadership above them too, which is great. You see that in football too, by the way. If you look at the great yeah. football teams, you know, don't look right. We, we don't look at the owner, but I promise you that the, there's a reason that certain teams never make it and other teams always are winning. Um, and that's because a great leader is an intelligent follower. 
It's the dysfunction. Like if you keep having a new head coach every two years and the owner is out partying and like the players don't feel like they're they're in this family environment that's like really the process is something that feels good, then you're going to see the, that's going to happen on the field too, right? So yep, exactly. Speaking of sports, that's actually a great segue into my first question. So you're a huge sports fan as I am. Um, you run a sports marketing business and I just, I want you to put your GM cap on for a minute since we're talking about it. And imagine that you're recruiting your ideal business professional right now, someone who's the quarterback of your business. What traits and attributes are you looking for in that person? Well, what I'm looking for first are his values. Uh, and the values would be gratitude. I'm looking for someone that finds the light, the love, and the lessons in all the activities that we get paid for. I then am looking for a forgiving individual. I'm looking for someone that uh, makes so many mistakes that they became an expert at forgiving themselves, but then it uh, is relative to the expansive acceleration and growth that I'm going to experience with them as a leader. I'm looking for someone completely accountable uh, that goes beyond liability, no blame, no shame, no justification, but just simply, this is what I did and this is what I learned from it. And then finally, I'm looking for an inspired individual, someone that can effectively communicate not only with all of the management, employees, partners, clients, associates, but also communicates effectively with the most powerful, omniscient, powerful, all-knowing source that loves that person more than I can love them or their mom can love them or they may even love their own children. And the reason is, is that when you pick a leader, they have to have certain skills and knowledge because that will determine the basement of their uh, contribution. Their skills and knowledge, no matter what happens, will determine the basement of how they do. So you take in the football analogy, Ryan Leaf has extraordinary skills and knowledge of football his basement was starting quarterback in the NFL. But combined with the skills and knowledge, I want someone to have the desire that they must be what they can be, a Tom Brady. I was just going to say, uh, yeah, he just retired the other day, so he comes to mind, but that's who always yeah. comes to mind. Yeah. He doesn't have the best skills and knowledge of a quarterback, Tom Brady. That's why he was drafted in the fourth round. That's why he wasn't the immediate starter you know, when he came to New England. But his desire determined his potential as the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Yeah, and so what, what I'm gathering from you on that is it, a lot of it is an internal measure, right? It's not the physical traits. Those get you to the basement. I like how you worded that. Like that's just basically you're standing on ground and you're, you're moving, you know, you're, you're in your position. But okay, great, you have the car, but what about the engine and all the pieces that come together for that thing to drive down the road and like the intangible things. But, you know, you hear the word intangibles thrown around and it's like, okay, well, what does that mean? You just really talked about gratitude. You talked about reflecting and being aware of like, if you make a mistake, you can internalize it and come back. And um, I encourage anyone who just listened to that, go back and listen to it again, maybe take some notes. I have my notepad right here. I'm going to go back to this and listen and take notes too, because those are things that, you know, we hear all the time and it sounds good, but it's like, no, th those are real things that we need to internalize so we can improve. Because if you continue to do the same thing and you hear that over and over again and expect different results, you're not going to get it. And there's no doubt, and I'm from Buffalo, New York, so it's hard to give love to Tom Brady because he beat us down right. for 20 years. But now as I'm more mature and I reflect on it, I, that's the guy I want for my business. That's the guy I want running my quarterback room. Like that's the guy based on all those things that he internalizes He's, he's in a class of himself, you know, Mike, the Michael Jordan level elite. Luckily, the Bills have Josh Allen, who may prove to be a 20-year superstar, just like Tom Brady. And Tom Brady's now out of the way, so it leaves room for Josh Allen in, in the uh, AFC, uh, AFC North. East, uh, yeah, right? East. East, East, AFC East. I always get confused with Pittsburgh and Cleveland. It, it seems like it would be North Buffalo, but it's East. I know. <laughs> it's Northeast. I the thing, I don't want to go too much in the rabbit hole. We could talk sports all day. Right. But the thing with Josh is like, I, I kind of am bummed that Tom Brady did leave the division because it would have been cool to see him battle a little bit, mano y mano, kind of pass the torch. But he, he got a couple times, a couple swings at Brady, and the Bills did fall short in those games. Then when he left, the Bills really, the whole team came together. Josh matured. And um, he, they, get, they did square off this year, if you remember, yeah. uh, the Tampa Bay game. Where the Bills were getting beat down, and, and Josh does not go down easy. So he fought all the way back to overtime. Say what you want about the referees there, but 
Our guys couldn't seem yep. to get separation uh, for some reason. But we better switch gears or else we'll be get This rabbit hole is dangerous to me. It's so let's dangerous, switch gears. baby. Hey, here's what we're going to do. Um, I want to talk about your daily non-negotiables. So there's things that you set up every day. I know you've, you've articulated this in a couple of the other interviews you've done. You set this up so it's like the, your best, most productive day. What are those non-negotiables every day? Yeah, so first is my health. Um, and this is not uh, something I've been doing for 20 years. My non-negotiable of health came later in life. I lost over $100 million, made it back, and went to my wife and I said, what can I do for you? You saved my life. You put me back on track. You had me take stock in who I was and what I wanted to become. And you stuck with me, even though I you know, hadn't acted appropriately and done the right things for our family and our business. You know, What can I do for you? And she said, take care of yourself. I said, what? She said, you know, your family has always come first and your activity you get paid for has always come second. I, I need you to put your health first. I need you to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to take care of anyone else. And uh, I started to realize as I studied my health that when you're healthy, you get the most valuable asset in life, which is wishes. See, I'm a resource. I am a repetition, a connection of the great source, of the omniscient, all-powerful source, the all-loving and all-knowing source. And in order to be a resource, you have to ask the source for what you want. You got to make wishes. And when you're healthy, you get as many wishes a day, as many as you want. And when you're unhealthy, you only have one wish. And I look to mm. a mentor of mine, Steve Jobs, who I worked with early days in the phone industry. I had a Windows CE device and had been blessed to be around him. And to see him on his deathbed with only one wish, a man who had everything, he could do whatever he wanted, but yet with all that he had, he only had one wish. And so please spend a minimum of an hour a day on your health. The second non-negotiable I mentioned, my family. Uh, I attribute and align all of my non-negotiables to time uh, because we're given 24 hours of activity a day. I have daily practices accordingly that take into consideration midterm and long-term objectives. So I do have goals. Uh, I call them milestones because I don't want to limit myself. So, you know, if I want to empower uh, over a billion people, not a billion, I want to live to over 111, not to 111. Uh, these are milestones for me. So I, I have a target uh, that I go after when I create my daily practices and utilize my non-negotiables with time. So a minimum of 30 minutes with my wife, minimum of 30 minutes with my 11 year old son. I'm going to repeat minimum of two minutes a day with my kids, three daughters, uh, teenage daughters, and then minimum of one minute a day uh, with my mom. The reason I'm stressing minimum is there's a lesson I learned from Lou Holtz, who was the head coach of Notre Dame football. He said, David, it's not what you say, it's what they hear. And so many people don't hear me say minimum. So they're like, that's terrible. You only spend two minutes a day with your teenage daughter. Like, first of all, if anyone has teenage daughters, you're blessed. I asked for five and got two, but it's a minimum. I'm trying for more, buddy. So you know, <laughs> don't have those attacking thoughts. And then so true. the minimum, of, right? And then minimum of one minute a day uh, with my mom, I'm going to give people a very valuable lesson. So take notes and find a way to access your notes after you take them. I tell my mom every day, that I'm healthy. I tell my mom I'm happy. I tell my mom I appreciate her. And I tell my mom I love her every single day. Because what I learned is as much as I thought she wanted all these other things for me, as much as she makes me prove this to her unreasonably if I don't tell her, like making me drive an hour to fix a screen door when I can obviously afford to have someone fix it for her, is when you can reassure a parent that you're healthy, happy, love and appreciate them, they need nothing else. Mm -hmm. And so that minute is extremely productive, accessible and gracious with my time. And then finally, I have a non-negotiable for activity I get paid for. Uh, that's my third non-negotiable. So I spend a minimum of 10 minutes a day being a student of my calendar, studying, not looking at my calendar, not glancing at it, not checking it. Those words drive me crazy. I'm talking about full attention plus intention to create the coincidences of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude to be efficient, effective, and statistically successful with my time in the activity I get paid for 
and the activity I don't get paid for. I don't believe in work. I believe in vacationing every day. I believe in making money every day. I don't think you need to take six weeks off to get off the grid. Not if you are utilizing time correctly with these non-negotiables of health, family, and activity you get paid for and are productive, accessible, and gracious with your time. Yeah, that was so good. So many mic drop moments right there, guys. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. David just mentioned his mom. That's a big part of his story. It's a big part of his inspiration. It's a big part of my inspiration, too, is my mother. And so I think we have uh, some common ground there. And we're going to get right back to that after a quick timeout here. We'll be right back with David Meltzer. Hey guys, it's Mike. I'd like to give a proper shout out to Navigator Bookkeeping. Look, for a long time, I ran my business without really understanding the full financial picture. I used my gut and my bank account balance to make decisions, which led to some poor choices and constant stress over my business's finances. I knew something needed to change. At the beginning of 2021, I made a decision that helped pave a more clear path for my business. I started working with Navigator Bookkeeping. Since then, my bookkeeping has been handled for me. I now understand the full financial story of my business, making important financial decisions much easier now, and it helps me plan for where my business is going. I highly recommend giving Navigator Bookkeeping an opportunity to help your business. Check them out at navigatingyourbooks.com. Again, that's navigatingyourbooks.com. It's time to know the full financial story of your business. Podcasting is a great way to engage with your audience and stay consistently relevant. The only problem is you don't have the time or desire to produce your own show. You simply want it done for you. And that's where Social Chameleon comes in. All you need to do is press record and upload the files. We'll handle the rest. From planning, production, post-production, distribution, and digital marketing, we have you covered. We realize that times are tough and funds are tight. And Social Chameleon believes in building supportive business relationships. By clicking on the link in this promo, we'll provide you seven free podcasting tips to get started, as well as a free 30-minute online consultation. This is the perfect opportunity for entrepreneurs, keynote speakers, industry experts, influencers, and anybody who has a personal brand. With Social Chameleon, we help you build a brand that is out of this world. We're ready and waiting. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link to get started today. All right, we're back with David Meltzer. You guys can connect with him on social media. It's all clickable in the show notes to make it super easy. Right before the break, he was talking about his mom and how that was a big inspiration in his story, how he takes time every day for himself, his family, his health, you know, his team, but also like, you know, he's not just working hard. We were joking at the, at the break, you know, washing machines work hard. There's, there's things you could work hard every day, but it doesn't mean that you're, you're making a difference or you're actually achieving those milestones that David talked about. Uh, You're not going to hit milestones if you don't put specific targets in place to go and get them. So one of the things he did, we're going to talk about his backstory and what the last 10 minutes really kind of get to this big part of his story. He's been massively successful. Like, I don't want, if you're, if you don't know his story, I want you guys to realize we're talking to a man here who in his mid twenties was kicking butt. Like he was making millions of dollars by his 30th birthday. And the crazy thing is like, he, he came from really a a background growing up in Akron, Ohio, uh, uh, four brothers, right? Himself and his sister, his mom um, was taking care of him because his, his dad left at five years old. And when David was five, his dad's gone. And he, once he made, made it successfully, he wanted to pay it all back to his mother. And then uh, I just want to say this quick, and I want to get uh, David's response to it. Once he had it all, everything was clicking, beautiful wife, his family, everything's great. He then lost it all, which is, which is devastating. And the coolest part of his story, and I think the most inspiring part of your story, David, is then you got it back. And I want you to tell us how the heck did you pull that off after you got it all in the first place? Well, two years before I lost everything, my wife saved my life uh, because she was the first person to tell me no. Uh, What happens is when you're successful nine months out of law school and you buy your mom the house in the car and you grow up with six kids, a single mom who packs her dinner in a paper bag and you're living every dream that you've ever 
deemed possible, including marrying your dream girl that you met in the fourth grade and dreamed about marrying, but she hated you all through elementary, junior, high school, and college and graduate school. And here you are, not only with everything that you ever dreamed of, plus access to everything you ever dreamed of because you're running the most notable sports agency in the world and they made the movie Jerry Maguire about your firm and you have things that billionaires you get to do that they can't even do. And all of a sudden you come home at 5.30 in the morning after partying at, with Little John at the Grammy Awards and your beautiful wife who you have shared three kids with under the age of eight in your mansion in Rancho Santa Fe in San Diego tells you, I'm not happy. You're not paying attention to your family, to your health, and to your business. I'm leaving. Mm. Your life changes. Wake up call. And it was a a wake up call that I almost didn't answer. I remember waking up the next morning, you talk about a wake up call. And I literally was thinking, I'm going to steal her joy, her money, because I believe money bought love and happiness. I was beyond in disbelief how dare she talk to me this way does she know who built all this you know this is where my ego was and then my wife told me i better take stock in who i was and what i wanted to become or i was going to end up dead and i was so angry and i remember distinctively looking over in my closet and there was a jacket that my father had given me six years earlier And at that time, when he gave me the jacket, I told my dad I hated him. It was the first present he gave me in 20 years. I told him, how dare you give me a jacket with no pockets that I could never wear. He told me to hang it in the closet so I could be buried in it. He told me I wouldn't be the richest man in the cemetery, and I was making the same mistakes that he had made. And I told him I hated him, that he was a liar, a cheater, manipulator, overseller, backend seller. I told him I hated him. Just as I had told just two weeks earlier, my best friend Rob, I hated him when he told me he wasn't going to go to the Masters with me because I was hanging out with the wrong people, doing the wrong things. And now my wife was telling me she was leaving me, and I hated her. And at that moment, two years before I lost over $100 million, looking at that jacket, I broke down and it came to me. I don't hate my dad. I don't hate my best friend. And I certainly didn't hate my wife. I hated myself. Mm -hmm. I was a liar, a cheater, manipulator, back-end seller, overseller. I hated myself so much, even though I had everything, every buddy else in the world wanted. I had taken it for granted. And I hated myself so much that I was self-sabotaging and I was killing myself by doing all the wrong things. And that's where those four values that I talked about, I look for in leaders, gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration. That's when I wrote those four things down and built out systems over 16 years now. Systems of daily practices, of being a student in your calendar, the 520 rule, the three no rule, the 25 no rule, all the five levels of intention, the mathematical equation of luck, attention plus intensity. I got a list of them that you can find for free on my videos. They're all there for you, but they all stem from my wife telling me the truth that I had lost what made me me and that I needed to take stock in me, that I needed to find within me what I wanted to find outside of me. And for 16 years, I've been utilizing those four values, building daily practices, not only to help me make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun, but help other people make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. That was, uh, I've done over 115 episodes now, and that's that hits me right in the heart because I can relate to certain things where I've self, self-sabotaged. I know that feeling of not understanding how or why you got there. Um, and then you have to pick yourself up and dust yourself off. But also, like, you were right away mindful of putting the right things in, in place. But it did take this this earth shattering, like, hey, look, I'm going to lose it all here. Like my wife has given me one more chance. And that, you know, and there was even points of your life where you did financially lose hundreds of millions of dollars and then had to build that back up. But I I can tell you, you know, I I don't know every part of your story, but the things I'm learning about you today in this interview and also in what I've studied about you in other interviews is that it's because of your processes, the systems you have in place, the things you do, you don't just say them. You don't say them on stage. You get paid to say these beautiful things on stage. You do the darn things that you're talking about. And look, guys, he's been able to say, you give me this, right? All this prosperous, uh, beautiful life. You take it away from me. 
I can get it again because I have the systems in place to go do it. So if you guys learn anything in this interview, go back and listen to everything David said so far. Take those notes because if you're in a situation where you're not happy with yourself right now, you may be taking it out on other people. Just get real with yourself. Is it you that you're not happy with? And if it is, start to correct those little things and you can really break through. Yeah, Mike, challenge your day with discipline. Don't challenge your day with regret right? They, they both equal the same amount of energy. The outcomes are distinctive and exponentially different. If you challenge yourself with discipline every day, coherence, remembering what you want and doing what it takes to get there, instead of regret, not doing what you want and forgetting how to get there, I promise you it's the same amount of energy, but the exponential differentiation between the two are amazing. And so everyone, you'd rather suffer from discipline than suffer from regret. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing is I'd, I, we could riff on this for a whole nother half hour, but it's okay to not be okay. And also it's okay to seek out help. I know a lot of times yeah. guys like us, we're like the, the male dominant, like the alpha male type deal. And we think we all have it all figured out and we don't want to hear someone else tell us that we're maybe broken, but without going and reflecting on that and starting somewhere, it's impossible to ever make any course correction. With the last two minutes, here's what I love to do. You're an author of many great books. Um, well written and, and you know well articulate on all your social media and everything you put out there. But here's the thing: I want you to think about it kind of in a um, you know different lens for a second. So imagine this: you're the author and protagonist in your own life story. You get to write the ending, and God willing, you continue to live a long, prosperous life. You're looking back on it. You're reflecting on it. You get to define your legacy. What would that be? One word: kindness. Kindness. So yeah. If my legacy is just people saying, man, I learned to be kind from him. I am kind because of him or he was kind to me. Regardless of the circumstances, that that true faith that I'm loved by something that's far greater, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing light that I brought to somebody else that we've defined as kindness, it would mean everything to me. You know, we talked about your mom, David, real quick, and we, we talked about how, you know, you, you grew up in kind of a blue collar, tough, tough situation. She was raising you and your four uh, brothers and your sister, and uh, you finally got to give back to her. You bought her the house, the cars and all this stuff. And But you did say that that's not the thing, the measuring stick of what makes her like just you coming over to fix the screen door and her knowing that you can have a cup of coffee with you at the dinner table and talk to you and still have a relationship with you and you spend, you say one minimum one to two minutes a day with your family. Um, I can tell you right now that if, if she was to listen to the last couple minutes of this interview and hear the word kindness and reflect on the fact that that didn't come from somewhere that came from, from her raising you the right way. And I know you had a tough relationship with your dad and, but what, what's encouraging to me is that you didn't let that derail you. There was moments where it certainly did, but you took the core things from your mother, um, you know, and and you put positive energy into your your soul, and you 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 now you're getting it out to the world. I just want to say one thing before we wrap up. You're a highly influential person on social media. There's a ton of people that have big followings, but the thing is, I'm I'm consider myself young. I'm in my mid 30s, but there could be a 12 year old, a 15 year old, a 21 year old tuning in on social media, and there's a lot of bad influences out there. And it's easy to click on something, hear someone shouting something and be like, oh, this person's great. I got to follow them. But I just want to say that you're someone who is a, a virtual mentor to me and to many people who tune into your content and you're a great role model. And I don't know the last time maybe someone's actually told that to you, but you are a great role model. And I just want to say thank you for putting all that amazing um, content out into the world. You have a team that's dedicated to make sure whenever you say something that can help someone, it doesn't go to the wind. It goes on social media so people can see it. So I'm going to end the interview with this. I tell everybody, be great and be grateful. And man, I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much for your time. Any last words? Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. I am grateful. Please reach out to me, David at dmeltzer.com. Thank you. Thank you guys so much.
I'd like to give a huge shout out to everyone for tuning in, especially those who listen all the way to the end to hear this message. Seriously, I appreciate you and my guests do as well. Giving a quick reminder to subscribe to this show, it's completely free and will allow you to receive notifications when new episodes are released. If you'd like to provide a tip as a gift, you can do so via patreon.com backslash miked up. It's spelled M-I-K-E-D up, patreon.com backslash miked up. You can give as little as $1 per month or as much as you'd like. Every dollar is greatly appreciated and completely unexpected. Appreciate your reviews and your messages coming in on social as well. Keep them coming. Your feedback is valuable and absolutely means the world to me. You can check out more episodes and content at mikeduppodcast.com. We're powered by Social Chameleon. You can also follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm the most active, and it's at Mike DiCiocco, M-I-K-E-D-I-C-I-O-C-C-I-O. Thank you so much for your continued support. You guys know what to do. Be great and be grateful.